guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is actually kindly sponsored by Wondershare PDF Element and I'll be talking about them later in the video. But basically in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys three hacks which I have found to be useful as a student, whether as a high school or university student, they are definitely applicable. I think that these hacks are especially useful for completing assignments and stuff because as a student, whether you're in high school or in university, assignments are what we get a lot and we have to do them under like a specific amount of time. Let's proceed with the video. The first hack that I have for you is to set false deadlines for yourself. So setting false deadlines for yourself is very useful in the sense that it forces you to actually get the assignment done as soon as possible. Um, I would set a deadline that is around a week earlier from the actual deadline. And I think this is especially useful if you have the habit of like putting off assignments and leaving stuff to the last minute. And from experience, I'm sure you would have learned that doing stuff at the last minute is not the right way to do it. And some things do tend to pop up at the last minute, things that you weren't expecting to do. Like let's say the deadline of the assignment is 30th of March and you were planning to do it on 28th of March. And what if something pops up on 28th of March, something that you have to do or if there's a function that you have to attend and it's a long assignment. So it's just a bad idea to leave assignments to the last minute. And now in uni itself, um, lecturers actually deduct the marks if you do not hand in assignments on time. So yeah, I definitely think that Setting false deadlines for yourself is one good way to make sure that you do complete your assignment on time and to make sure that you have time to go over the assignment and to check, double check if there's any mistakes or anything that you want to add to the assignment so that you can get the most marks out of it. Now we'll move on to the second hack, which is how to convert native and scanned PDF into Word documents. Because if you have done enough assignments by now, you will know that Word documents are the easiest to deal with and they are easy to edit. We are most familiar with Word documents. However, there are some files that come in PDF form and especially if you are trying to refer some things from the internet from an assignment and you want to edit the PDF form, you can't do that unless you convert it into Word document. And so this is where Wondershare PDF element comes in. Personally, I have downloaded a few apps to convert PDF to Word document before, but they, but those apps didn't work out as well as I would have wanted it to, especially when I have scanned PDFs from my phone and I tried to convert it to Word document. Some of the letters like couldn't be detected and somehow it was just a jumble of words on the page. So um, with Wondershare PDF element, it's so easy to do it. and. Converting PDF to Word document is something which we all will do a lot as students, especially as university students. Um, I had this assignment one time where I had to write a 30-page biology thesis and it was on a topic that I wasn't too familiar with. It was like environmental pollution and all that and the syllabus that we had was actually pretty narrow. So I had to get all the sources from the internet, obviously, but then I couldn't copy paste exactly. So then what we had to do was to copy paste, but to change the structure of the words, like change active to passive sentences and all that, and just like change some words, um, replace it with synonyms. And there were some sources that was in PDF file. And so I had to change it to word document in order to edit it, to make my life easier. And as and I feel like if I had Wondershare PDF element at the time, it would have made my life a bit easier because it's so easy to do it with this app. And so now we'll proceed to the clip where I show you a short tutorial of how to use it. So welcome to this quick little tutorial on how you can use Wondershare PDF element on your computer. And so the first thing that you want to do once you have that app on your computer is to click open the app. Once you have opened the app, you're going to see this and you're going to click open file. Now you can select the file that you want to choose, which is the PDF file that you want to convert to Word. You can select that. So I want to convert this to Word. So I'm just selecting that. Okay, now the file is open and I'm going to click to Word here. And then 
Before I save it, I can just quickly check the settings. Usually, setting a default is fine. So that's fine. Okay. And I'm going to click save. And it's really, really quick. Because this is a file of 22 pages and it takes like 2 seconds to save it. And now it's finished. So I can go over to my desktop and open file. with Word document and then you can see that I can now edit the file however I like which is really really useful I can just type anything here edit it however I like so yeah this is how to convert a native PDF to Word document so next, I'll show you how to convert a scanned PDF to Word and it's actually pretty similar. It's very easy to do this as well. So you're going to click open the file first. Okay, now that this is open, you're going to click open file. And you can select the file that you want to convert. I want to convert this PDF file to Word document. So I'm going to select that. Click open. And then the file is going to be open. Okay, now that the file is open, I'm going to click to Word. Because I want to convert it to Word and okay so when it comes to a scanned pdf what you want to make sure is that um the ocr recognition is enabled so that it can actually detect the scanned pdf so if you check that the ocr recognition is enabled then all is well you can just click ok and click save and yeah just wait for it to save and this is a pretty huge file, so it takes like maybe 3 seconds as we speak, but it's very quick as well. So yeah, you're done. Now you can find the file um, on the desktop or wherever I saved it. I'm going to look for the file. Okay, so my file is here. And I can now open it with that's this original file that I have which was in PDF and now I can just open it in Word so yeah so it's really simple to do it say you have multiple PDF files that you want to convert to Word and you don't want to do it one by one, you can do it all at the same time by clicking this batch process. Okay, and you can add your PDF files here. Add this file, and then I have the other one as well. This file. Um, so both of these, we're going to open it. And then I'll just click start and it's converting it to Word. If you have a lot of files, you can just click all of those files and then convert them all together. It really doesn't take that long, especially since the file that I'm converting is actually very heavy. Um, these are like 36 pages in total and the converting process is like finished in no time at all. And I can find all my files here. So yeah, that's how you use um, Wondershare PDF element. It's super. So yeah, that's all you need to do in order to convert PDF files to Word documents via Wondershare PDF element. So now let me explain a little bit about native PDF and scanned PDF. I'm sure that this term would be foreign to you. But basically, native PDF is originally generated from the computer, from Word or from Excel, and it is built out of codes that allow them to be read and to be scanned easily.
scanned PDF on the other hand do not have the electronic code in order to maintain its integrity so it would have lost its original digital formatting and this just translates as it being harder to edit but with Wondershare it's easy and I'll show you. So if you are interested in trying out Wondershare PDF element, I'll leave some links down below. Um, there are links to the free trial, to the app on your phone and to 50% off your purchase. Finally, the third hack that I have for you guys is especially for assignments, um, for computer-based assignments. And it is to use narrow margins sometimes when you are forced to limit down your words. So I remember this one time in foundation when we were assigned to write a movie review for this movie called The King's Speech. And we were to review it on various aspects like the filmography, videography, the tone used, the language used. And, and we were to review the movie within 500 words and basically just write a movie review within 500 words. And as you would have guessed, it is quite difficult to narrow down all of our opinions about the movie into just 500 words, especially when we have so many aspects to cover. Our lecturer, our lecturer actually gave us all the aspects that we have to cover in that essay and we were to like follow that aspect. And it turns out that a lot of us actually went overboard and we had um, over 1000 words for our movie review. So we went to our lecturers and asked her if it was okay. And she said it was okay if it was around like two and a half pages. Most of us actually had around four pages of the movie review and she wanted only two and a half pages but towards the end she wasn't too particular about the number of words and we just had to like cut down a little bit and squeeze it into two and a half pages. So then what we did was we used the narrow margin you know in the word document there's these margins where it's normal or narrow or wide and surprisingly when we used the narrow margin Everything just turned out okay and it was around two and a half pages in the end although the number of words was way more than 500. So it just can make a lot of difference. So if your lecturer happens to be particular about the number of pages of your assignment and not about the word count, then changing the margin is one way to do it. You can even change it to white if your essay happens to be too short. Yeah, just play around with that. This is just one thing that I've learned from writing that movie review back in my foundation days. So yeah, those are the three hacks that I have learned as a student both in high school and university student. And I hope that whether you're a student from high school or from university, you have managed to learn something from this video. And I want to thank Wondershare PDF Element for sponsoring today's video. If you, you guys are interested, you can totally Click the link below which will take you to Wondershare. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.